Good morning guys, good morning internet, good morning YouTube, my name is EJ, I'm back again with another narrated art time lapse of one of my artwork. Um, I recorded this particular piece uh, in 2018 I think, uh, this is a very old old artwork. Um, this was done for a prompt for uh, conceptart.org uh, subforum daily sketch group. And for the life of me, I could not remember what the prompt for this artwork was. I do know what the number uh, of the prompt is. It is Daily Sketch Group uh, prompt number 2625. <laughs> if I'm not wrong, because that's what I have in my notes. That's why I name my file. Um, I, I name it what that prompt number is plus the actual prompt. Um, but yeah, for the life of me, I cannot remember what the prompt was. In my in my file name, I have the file name written down as um, Flying Fish Dragonfly, which I'm almost positive is not is not the right prompt at all. Um, so yeah, I really. <laughs> I really have no clue as to what the prompt was. Um, but anyways, I ended up calling it Dragon Parrot because um, as you can see from the final image, it looked like a bird of some sort, but it's clearly like not the kind of bird that we have, you know, in our world. It's basically a made up creature. And um, I attached the word dragon on it because, again, like I said, when I saved this file, I saved it as flying fish dragonfly. So I just kind of got dragon from the dragonfly. Um, but yeah, it's not really like a dragon. So, um, so yeah. Uh, but enough about where my idea came from and how I came about with the image and the file name. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about what I just did in Krita and this was an old technique that I used to do back in the day. Basically I would just put some random colors for a background just so that I could have some form of color in there. And that's what I basically did. I just threw in a bunch of colors with a textured brush of some sort and then kind of just smudged them around to come up with this very saturated orange which is really really saturated now that I look back at this um but yeah as soon as I'm done with the background which was uh done fairly quickly I started um creating the shape of the creature which you could pretty much see um what the shape is um in the video right now uh there's a this dark shape of um uh, of a flying creature of some sort and i got the dragon fly or i i clearly have like an insect in my mind because uh this flying creature has four wings instead of just you know your typical two wings from a like a typical bird or whatnot um so I guess that's probably the reason why I ended up calling it a dragonfly because dragonfly has four wings. But you can see from the shape I created that I decided to go for four wings. Um, I don't know what my thought process was then at this time. I guess I was just going um, automatic on this one where I was just kind of just throwing some shapes in. And I think I might have just accidentally created four wings and I was like, sure, why not? Let's go with that, you know? Um, so yeah, this is like a very loose, um, experimentation, basically, where I'm just kind of just throwing in a bunch of shapes. And then, as usual, as my normal regular method, after I have the shape in and thrown in a few colors. Oh, I forgot to mention. And so as soon as I created the shape, I went back with a multiply brush to like darken the areas, some areas uh, where the uh, shadow form will be. And then I went back with um, a color dodge brush to kind of highlight um, 
or to kind of indicate where the light is going to be, which is obviously going to be in the top, as you can see. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so as soon as I did the multiply and the color dodge, I started doing my smudge uh, routine, my blending routine. Which basically what I do is I kind of just smudge things around and kind of blend things around into recognizable shapes. That's like the key thing for me here is that I'm creating recognizable shapes. And basically the idea behind this is that uh, I'm trying to create a base paint from which I could put my details on, you know. So, um, as for the recognizable shapes that I'm trying to aim for, I really didn't have anything in mind. I was just kind of just smudging the colors around into something that I like. So, um, you can see in the final image that the creature has some form of feather fur look to it, which I didn't even really intend. That feather fur look came about because I started recognizing like the fur nature of the creature when I did this whole smudge thing. You know, as you can see, I, I'm like making this, my, my smudging pattern kind of felt like like I'm creating hair or fur or something instead of feathers. I think my intention really was to create feathers, but it ended up, you know, looking more like fur-like. So, uh, so yeah. But yeah, I'm just like smudging everything around. Uh, and then after that, I'll start doing the detailing process of sorts. Okay, so I'm close to being done with the whole smudging thing. So what, what I'm going to do now is uh, take my regular simple brush, simple round brush, uh, and use the black color. Kind of basically set it like a pen. And I'm going to draw a quick outline of um, the image I'm seeing in my head. So I have, so obviously like when I smudge things around everything kind of looks messy there's really no definition so there's really like no idea where things are I mean there's kind of like recognizable shapes but then the details really aren't there so what I typically do when I get into situations like this is that I would take my re regular uh, brush uh, my simple uh, flow opacity brush and then I would basically just draw on top of 
the smudge area just to kind of indicate what I'm kind of seeing in my head and to help clarify what I'm seeing in my head. So you can see right now in the video, um, I clearly, obviously, am drawing the wings. So obviously, the four wings um, set like a dragonfly. And since obviously I started seeing the shapes of like the fur in there, I decided that, you know what, I guess I am going to go with fur instead of feathers. And then obviously I did the face first, you know. The face was really messy when, when I was like watching the video just now. Um, the face didn't really look recognizable at all. So, you know, I, I don't really know how I came about with the head. But clearly I saw something and I kind of drew it. So, which worked out great. Uh, and then obviously now I'm doing, you know, the legs. And then the tail. Um is kind of like a dragon like a regular dragon tail um instead of it being like uh like the kind of tail that you would see on birds it's more like the kind of tail that you would see in a dragon so yeah um i have to say this this creature is really really unique like you know i, I could not possibly imagine a creature like this existing in real life uh, because the mechanics of it just doesn't seem to look like it would work you know I mean for the, <laughs> the first instance or like or for the first or my number one reason for you know why I think that a creature like this wouldn't exist is because of the whole fur thing you know fur is heavy <laughs> you would typically expect um you typically expect feathers on something that's flying or in the case of insects you don't expect anything at all like no hair or if there is hair there's like minimal hair um so yeah to have fur on the flying creature just seems like it's impossible because fur by its very nature is really heavy so that's one reason why I don't think this creature would exist. The second reason is the tail. Um, I honestly don't see the function of the tail like the way it is right now. Aerodynamically, it just does not make sense. Um, I mean, it's like a dog's tail. It kind of looks like it's a dog's tail or like a horse's tail. And... You know, it's not like a bird's tail that could help maneuver the creature. Um, this particular tail that we're looking at just seems like it's so heavy that I just could not see it maneuvering. But, you know, for look-wise, it's definitely interesting, you know. Like, if a creature like this was to exist in real life, it would be definitely, definitely interesting to study the mechanics of how it flies kind of like how the bee is very interesting in the way it flies because you know a lot of uh, a lot of people a lot of scientists and a lot of engineers pretty much considers the bee as like an almost impossible flyer or uh, I, I guess that's <laughs> the best way for me to put it basically what people what scientists have mentioned about the bee is that the bee is so heavy for its wings that it's almost impossible for its wings to carry it. But somehow, it does. The wings can carry a bee. So, you know, it's like something that scientists study heavily with bees. Their flying mechanics because they really find it interesting that they're able to create lift with such weak wings. So, you know, I can't really say something is impossible because clearly... You know, by its mechanical nature, a, bird, a bee should not fly, but somehow it flies. So I can't really say the same thing for this creature, too, you know. Like, I can't say that judging from the look of it, it doesn't look like it could fly, you know. But it, it might be able to, so I don't know. So it would definitely be interesting. But for visual look, <laughs> it is definitely, definitely, definitely interesting. Like, I have no idea where how I came about with this creature, but I came up with it. So, <laughs> totally interesting. But enough about that and enough about talking about the mechanics of this flying creature. Um, 
So after I did the outline, what I did was that I erased everything outside of that outline, you know, to kind of help delineate the whole shape of, of this flying creature. And now that I have the full shape of it, I'm basically set to detail. Like I finally have like my good base paint. Like this right now, what we're seeing right now is a very good base paint for me to, you know, paint on top of. And the very, very first thing I'll work on is the face because it's, you know, one of the things that people look at, um, whether it be a person or a creature, you know, is the first thing that people typically gravitate towards looking. So, um, you'll see me work on it. I stay corrected. Somehow I'm detailing the leg. Um, I really thought I started with the face, but I was wrong. Oh, what I'm actually doing is I'm erasing not really erasing but smudging parts of the outline because parts of the outline are still showing through and I want to get rid of it in the final image so I'm basically just smudging things some more just to get those outlines out of the way so more than likely I'm gonna go to the wings and to the tail and smudge those out um, yeah which is what I'm actually doing on the tail, smudging everything. But yeah, after after I'm done with this part, I'm going to detail um, the face. And the detailing process for me is, is very, very simple. It's like a rinse repeat process. Basically what I do is I delineate my edges, which pretty much means, you know, I make my edges clear. Um, Either I go back and really make some highlighted outline on it, which I rarely do. Um, what I typically do is I just pick a local color around the area that I, I want to make sharp and just basically just keep going over that area until the shape is clearer. So I delineate, delineate my edges to make my edges clearer and that will make the form stand out. And then when the form is standing out, then I'm going to accentuate the shadows, kind of help define the form some more. And then on top of that, I will add the highlights. Um, I remember when I was working on this piece, I really had fun doing the fur look. Because that was one of the first things that I saw in this flying creature was that, oh wow, you know, um, instead of getting feathers i ended up with fur and again like i said i i'm hypothetical i'm i'm guessing as to what my thought process was because this was such a long time ago i don't even remember what my thought process was but i honestly think that i was really going for feathers but i ended up with fur but when i saw the fur i just went and ran away with it because it was so much fun detailing like i remember that part i remember having fun doing the details on the fur um and you can see that I didn't even really fully detail this whole creature because um, I wanted this to be a speed paint. I mean, the whole thing just took me less than an hour, so I really wanted to do this fast and quick. And you can see that, you know, all I ever really did for the fur was just kind of just add a few highlights here and there and add, you know, a few shadowed areas and boom, I was done. You know, I had the fur look. So yeah, doing the fur was very, very much fun, which you can see me start uh, doing it right now. Well, after the face, but yeah.
That part was just so cool to do. Um, this little fur thing on his neck. Um, as you can see, it, I did it very, very simply. You know, I, I just took uh, one color that I picked from the local color and then I just kind of just make marks on it over and over again just to kind of indicate um, the fur nature of, of his skin. So it was really, really simple how I did this. But it was very, very effective, you know. I mean, a few strokes here and there, and then I got the look that I wanted. Um, so yeah, this was this was really fun. Like doing all this this part was really fun because it was so simple. Like I, I didn't realize or I didn't think how simple it was going to be. So yeah, it was very much fun. And then after this part, I, I did um, the area underneath the wings and then the leg. And after I'm done with the face. So really just all those areas that I worked on. Like the face. The few details that I put in the face. And then the few details I put on under the wings. And on the leg. Like all of those details was just enough to just kind of just complete the photo. You know. I mean I could have gone on fully detailing this piece. Um, and totally pursuing it. But just those few things that i added just kind of gives enough of an indication as to what the whole creature is going to be like and what the whole look of the creature was going to be like that that i didn't even really need to fully detail so uh so yeah it, it was successful for me in a way um i mentioned this before about how speed painting is is very difficult you know even though i can accomplish a prompt in a short amount of time you know if you ask me to draw you know whatever you want me to draw and gave me a time limit i can typically pull it off you know but uh, typically i don't like the look of a speed paint because you know i'm like just the kind of guy who likes to develop things so for things to just you know come along really nicely and very quickly for me it's it's really awesome and this is one of those things where it was like I, I didn't really have a set agenda in my mind as to how to detail it and quite frankly I've never even really de done a whole lot of fur work you know when when I approached this painting so that was part of the reason why it was just kind of just cool how all of this just came so easily for me you know in the detailing process so yeah totally dug it but yeah now I'm working on the legs and trying to add more for like details to it which is so so cool <laughs> like I just absolutely love this part but yeah after this part it's it's done um it, the whole thing just gives enough of an indication as to what the birds uh what this flying creature is going to look like that I didn't really need to pursue the rest of the image anymore so and again, like I said, I wanted it to be a speed paint, so yeah. Totally, totally cool how this worked out.
this is pretty much it for this speed paint guys um thank you guys for watching it with me i will catch you guys in the next video good night <laughs>